It's 17.06 GMT. This is Focus in Africa. Welcome to the program here on the BBC World Service. I'm Audrey Brown and coming up shortly, poetry from Anglophone Cameroon on the sense of political marginalization there. A lot of people do not know that a section of Cameroon is English speaking. So Anglophone writers have that obligation to carry our voices out into the world. And this first poem is titled Because We Are Poor. They rule and rule and we cannot talk. When we cry democracy, them go crazy and stuff our mouths with stolen ballots because we are poor. That's coming later. Along with your comments, uh, hashtag Focus on Africa on our social media platforms, BBC News Africa is where you'll find it. Still about Cameroon, but this time it's the poetry from English-speaking Cameroonian writer Joyce Ashun Tan Tang, whose new volume of poetry, Beautiful Fire, looks at the political strife in Cameroon and why she believes the only solution is a separate state for English speakers. Leslie Goff met up with Joyce Ashun Tan Tang, who is a university professor in the United States, to talk about why, according to her, Anglophone writers lack the words to describe Cameroon's current political situation. Anglophone Cameroon writing matters because a lot of people out there in the world do not know that a section of Cameroon is English speaking. So Anglophone writers have that obligation to carry our voices out into the world. And several of these Anglophone writers have taken up this cause. Yes, particularly the playwrights Bate Bisong, uh, Bole Butake. It was a, a crusade for them. Their plays, especially in the 90s, made it very clear to people that Anglophones wanted equality. Who gives you orders to treat us like dogs, <laughs> officer? Now, this is the moment of truth, the moment of your death and the moment of our liberation. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. The lion is no more. The elephant has fallen. That's militant stuff there. Yes. You're an academic, an author, you're a poet, and you've got a new collection called Beautiful Fire, which makes reference to the ongoing political situation in southern Cameroon. Yes, and this first poem is titled Because We Are Poor. They rule and rule and we cannot talk. When we cry democracy, them go crazy and stuff our mouths with stolen ballots because we are poor. Because they made us poor, they woo us in our own homes, bringing collar knots of their guilt. But woman does not live by collar knot alone, but every drop of ancestral blood because, because we have never, never been poor. Now, that, that, that's a poem of yours, outspoken, militant. How are other writers tackling the subject of the election coming and just the general political conflict in the country? In, in the 90s, in, when we had the other wave of Anglophone nationalism, writers were... They used metaphor, allegory to point out the Anglophone situation. Now we are overwhelmed with real terror, violence... The carnage is real. I think the writers are overwhelmed. Ekpe Inyang just had something today on Facebook, uh, an environmental poet, but also very committed on what is happening on the ground. He has a poem today titled Violence, decrying the violence now going on. And so poets are grappling with the situation going on. But there are very few. What is happening right now has overwhelmed our imagination. And that is a choice the P- Professor um, Joyce Ashun Tan Tang, and she was speaking to Leslie Goff about the reasons why uh, Anglophone writers in Cameroon need to write about the situation in their part of the country. Her new volume of poetry is called Beautiful Fire. <laughs> 